Hello YouTube, I'm El Worfi, and today we're going to be playing some Napoleon Total War. So today I'm going to be playing uh, with my good buddy Jimmy, he's the guy who played as the Russians in the first uh, Napoleon game. Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to take a look at my British army first. I have one unit, uh, in the end, I know what I have. I have two units of um, Light Dragoons, alright, alright, and I have one unit of uh, Dragoons, just regular Dragoons. They're like the heavy units. Then I have a total of one, two, three, four, five light foot. These are my light infantry units. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six units of regular foot, like the meat of the force, line infantry. I'm going to pause. And then uh, I have one unit of fencibles, the militia, you know, they're not that good. And then I have an extra unit of foot guards. Uh, well, no, actually, you know what? There's a difference. These are actually foot guards. They're not regular foot. That was my mistake in the last video. Uh, they're a bit better, a bit more elite. And then I have another unit of militia, because filler. And then back here, the, the battle isn't completely set up yet. Uh, I have a general staff uh, unit and uh, KGL and Highland foot. These are my elite dudes. They're there protecting the general. Now let's take a look at my um, ally here. He is running a total of, yep, they're all Ulans. Four units of cavalry, all of them being Ulans. Uh, he's playing as the Austrians. He has, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven uh, units of German Fusiliers. He has... Uh, one, two, three, four Jaegers. They're like his light infantry. And he has actually more Fusiliers. So he has like nine Fusiliers. He has a lot of Fusiliers, pretty much. He's going heavy on the line infantry. Not much in the elite department. And of course he has uh, these guys. Uh, the uh, staff uh, general. He's not uh, bringing anyone special here. But actually, you know what? I think his general, the way he positioned it, uh, no, it's in the middle. Okay. So then, uh, let's uh, jump over here to the French player. This guy is... Uh, I forget his name, but you'll uh, see it at the end here. So we have his general staff, accompanied by a unit of dragoons and chassiers. Then we have a Polish legion, a Swiss foot, a Voltigu Voltigiers, young guard, and more Swiss foot. So two Swiss foot. Uh, then he has two more chassiers uh, in the uh, behind the line, and then uh, another Swiss. He has a lot of Swiss foot. He has four Swiss foot uh, so far, and then chassiers. I wasn't fighting this guy. That's why I'm a little unknown about what he has. He has more chassiers over here. Old guard, Polish legion, and Polish legion. Yeah. So he's he's up here on the top of the hill. When we picked this map, we didn't know they would have this giant hill. Let me just tell you that. And then the pe person I got to fight was uh, this guy. He had two Polish Legion units. He had uh, more some chassiers. They were both French, by the way. Uh, old Guard on top of this hill. Uh, by the way, you cannot get off of the hill directly. You have to go all the way around to do that, uh, which will matter. Then he has uh, Voltigeurs and more chassiers uh, in the front here. Uh, two Swiss fo three Swiss foot on this side and two Polish Legions uh, at the town. I was so glad he didn't position, like, in the town, which he could have done, uh, which would have made this battle a lot harder um, for us. So he has carabiners, he has two carabiners, a Polish guard legion, and his uh, general staff unit. All right, so let's actually play. So immediately, my when we spawn and I look at his stuff, I'm like, oh crap, I'm not in position to fight this guy. And I'm thinking to myself, how the heck am I supposed to beat someone who's gonna, like, totally not deploy near me in any way at all? So I decide, okay, let's just move everybody over. And I was talking to my guy, uh, Jimmy, in TeamSpeak, and Jimmy was real good about being like, okay, man, don't worry about it, you can just move everyone over. So I learned about a formation key, so I just ordered everyone to move, and it was so helpful, because we're all running, because we're completely out of position which is giving this guy time to set up uh, his defenses. Uh, because he is the defender, uh, and he will be kind of camping, kind of not. Uh, it's, it's not. Don't worry, he's not turtling. It's a very good fight. Much better than the, uh, the first one. 
that you saw earlier. So these guys are all just running, you know, doing their thing. I don't choose not to move my cab because I see these guys up here at uh, d blocking this middle crossing. So I didn't really uh, want to abandon it in case something tried to sneak in. So immediately he pushes up all of these uh, Voltigeurs, Chasseur, yeah, two units of Voltigeurs and Chasseurs uh, to get ready to take on my army. Now, of course, because thanks to that formation, I was able to redeploy uh, pretty well. And this is an open area. This is where I wanted to fight because I knew if we had fought up in uh, this area up here, uh, I would have been at a huge disadvantage. But this kind of levels the playing field a bit. The rules for this game were uh, no artillery and a uh, max of five light units which uh, these men have clearly done, you know. They've clearly got it all figured out. And these guys have super far stretched their lines, which is really good. Uh, you want to be doing that. These guys were much better uh, than those first people we fought. Now, at this point, we're getting near the edge of the map. What I sh So I'm like kind of micromanaging a bit because when I order the formation, these guys were ordered to all line up, you know, like that, you know, facing the wrong way. And then these guys are moving out in... Uh, you know, column, which is not what you want to do. Uh, as you can see, the fencibles, they look a little different uh, than the rest of my men, but overall, they look the same. I like the red coats. They're very good. Now, immediately, to kick off the battle, he sends over these guys. And I and I didn't notice this at the beginning, but then my friend's like, hey, you should totally take your cav and wipe out this unit of light units because he's trying to, you know, encompass you. So in just a second here, maybe I spoke a bit too soon. But yeah, so I turn... And immediately, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm not going to push this uh, quite yet because, you know, he, I'm still setting up. So I just take this cav and rush. And I don't know if he was distracted or he was, he was trying to do something. He does get a volley off, but, like, I lost a total of, like, four men in the, sh in the shooting before the, the cav hit. And immediately his men are, like, half demoralized because they got hit by a cav charge. That's normal. Then they go into the red, and I pretty much... Uh, route them pretty quick. Nothing else is happening in the battlefield, so I'm just going to watch this because it's cool. And if you want to know, the Austrians are moving up, and the uh, French on the top of the hill are not really moving in any way uh, to counter that. So Im immediately, um, the cavalry is uh, able to wipe out this whole unit. Uh, they don't really have anything left over, and I ignore this for a bit because I noticed that the French were moving up on the right side. So I immediately am like, okay, we gotta extend lines, we gotta match him. Uh, but then, eventually I get smart, and this is really important that I did this too and I didn't forget about him. I pull my cav out, uh, we're down to 37, which is pretty good. I took out a whole light unit and only lost like maybe 8 men. Uh, even though they are cav, it's still a pretty major victory. And my ally's still moving up, there's a bit of movement, but to be honest, that's not, um, they don't really interact too much in the beginning, which is fine. So, I know I have all my lights, you know, I'm not really paying too much of attention. I didn't realize these were militia, and it's pretty funny later on. Um, so, uh, I'd, I've been watching uh, some tactic videos, and uh, I learned that you want to be pretty much encompassing the enemy. And you notice, here's the border, right here, right? So, what he should have done, is he should have gotten those, uh, see these guys in the back behind? You know, uh, he needs to try and encompass me, but he has these units, like, over here. I don't know uh, if he was preparing for, like, to shoot at my cav or something, because there's no crossing there. Uh, so he puts up stakes and falls back. I can spot the stakes, so, you know, I'm not going to charge my cav in. Instead, I'm just going to make a very nice uh, line over here on the side. And that will be handled very quickly. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a bit of lag, not from the video or from uh, you guys, but in the game. We had a bit of lag, so if anything slows down or freezes, it's not my fault. Uh, that We had it in the game, and we were kind of sitting around like, okay, how are we going to do this? You know, we planned it out when we were talking. So I take my calf. He was like, hey, those guys are totally undefended. He gets the first volley, but it's all right, because they're just militia. I didn't realize they were militia. I was treating them like they were uh, light infantry. So that's why uh, they were out of range. And I was like, oh, why, why aren't they firing? So I just get closer, you know, and he pulls back. And I was going to charge my cav in, but uh, he retreats to his stakes. So obviously I can't do that uh, quite yet. Then uh, if you... Uh, 
go over here to the Austrian lines. They're just all moving up, getting ready to hold this river. Because I was talking, uh, he, uh, I pointed, we point, talked about how there were stakes over there and how he's not going to get a good calf charge and the other guy's just turtling. So I'm like, all right, just let me worry about these guys. So he's not firing yet. Oh, well, he is. And then I'm like, oh, crap, got to move up again. And keep in mind, I've, I haven't lost actually too many out of this because his light infantry, for whatever reason, weren't the most accurate, so I'm, I'm not going to drop below 70 until I get into firing, which is kind of the major thing, because when you're still at 70, you know, you can still do basic stuff, and as you can see, I wrap my line all the way up, I'm just reforming, this guy was a bit too crunched, that's why he's in a, a triple column, usually you want double at most, and so I'm firing back, these militia were surprisingly good, and these are un not upgraded militia, they're just regular dudes, and I was thinking, wow, these line infantry are really good, I mean, technically they are, but not really. So then my buddy's like, hey, there's a big force in the middle, um, and I'm telling, and we're talking, and he said, they're not facing me, they're facing you, uh, but I, I didn't really get it too much, you know, because I was too focused on this. You know, I had this whole line stretched out, I was ready to uh, fight him. And so I just keep marching up, and then I realize, hey, we're right on the border, so if I go and try and loop around him, he can't loop around me because territory and, like, the way the game works. So these guys stay heavy morale. I think it's because uh, they were um, they're fre they're still fresh. They're confident and fresh. That's why they're not really doing that bad. And my men are all around. And we've made. I mean, this is a, a mistake on my part having this kink. If he wanted to, he could cav charge me in the back. Uh, but keep in mind, I still have all these dudes in reserve, uh, ready to go. And I have these calves slowly moving around because I'm thinking, okay. Uh, I might need to get around these stakes at some point. And so this is my Highland foot. They're really good. And these are uh, regular foot. And they're supporting army. You know, they're encouraged because they're supporting their army. That's why when you keep men together, you have better morale. Now, stakes don't really mean anything uh, when you're... Um, when you're using infantry. You know, stakes, you know, you can just kind of walk through them. Because they're stakes. And I just kind of leave these guys here for most of this, because he's not moving, and I didn't want to push anything before it was not ready. Uh, so then I'm just going to kind of line up again, even farther on the side, and what's he going to do? Fortunately, he didn't get into that uh, building at all, so that meant I was able to make this U-shape. So you see how I have kind of this S-shape going, but in the end it's going to be kind of like a line, and I move all these men up forward because we need to do something about that about uh, these guys, because I want to push up the middle. You know, the middle's the most important part. And these guys get kind of cut off, but I make way for them, eventually. So in the end, he's just kind of setting up his light infantry. And he's firing at my highland foot. When I play, I'll admit, this is a mistake I do, I don't really keep track of who's who. So, I mean, the fact that highland foot were on this side is probably why uh, they were able to do all right. Now, uh, my ally was pushing Cav all the way around because he didn't know about the middle crossing, so he was just setting up in the town because the defender didn't take the town. Anyway, sorry. Uh, we start fire. I push these two units who are back here up uh, the middle. These are Lightfoot, so they have the range to combat them. And then I push my men up a bit farther. Not overextending my lines, though, because I want to keep in line with these guys. And then we get good volleys onto them. You know, that really hurts their morale, you know. They're under missile attack, they're firing, you know, they're, they're technically winning uh, this battle. Uh, because these guys uh, haven't yet joined. And I form up, uh, you know, to flatten out, make it pretty good. He pulls back uh, pretty well, because he wanted to... He realized he was getting pushed back on that side. And at the same time, uh, I'm moving up this line to uh, go and face uh, behind them. Because I figured they'd need support, because that's where the bulk of his army is, and I thought that's what he would do. I had these cav hidden in the back. I don't know if he saw them or what, but he uh, he didn't bring his cav over to retaliate, which I thought was a really good move by him, you know? I'm really glad he didn't uh, use his cav to try and come after mine on this side. Because that wouldn't have been the right move. So he pulls back. These guys are sitting all the way back here behind the hill. Now, when I was playing, I didn't realize they were behind there because I was still lining up to try and get over there. And these men are still at like 86, so I wasn't too concerned about them. And the fact that they're Highland Foot 
means that they can survive. Now, I thought these guys were shooting at me, but they ended up shooting at them, which makes sense. So this cap charge shows up, and I admit, I wasn't ready for it. I didn't uh, catch it at, at the first moment, but I managed to uh, square up. These guys pull back. I don't know what they were doing. They just didn't go after me. So I'm in square, and I kind of have some micro issues with that. So I realize uh, we're losing over here, and right when my Highland Foot get green, as they're moving, I know they can't put up stakes or square, so I just immediately charge with my cav. And this is only two of my cav, you know? These are my dragoons and uh, light dragoons. I needed the heavy cav in there in order to help it. And look at this. Like, these militia, they're 55 men, and they're firing quite, quite decently, you know? They're doing a good job. And I was really surprised, to be honest. So all these men, you know, I'm not still not the best micromanager. These guys should have been moving up. But lesson learned. This is my second game. Uh, Jimmy is just holding the line, by the way. Uh, as you can see, he's not really pushing. Because he had trouble. Because he didn't want to get attacked on this massive town. So while all of that chaos is happening, uh, he brings in Cav. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. I lined up to fire, because uh, I wanted to get quick shots on him. I was hoping that would work, uh, but that ended up being a mistake, so I square. Well, I try to square. But fortunately, because, uh, you know, as these lines were moving up, and, you know, I was very focused on this side, you know, I wanted to win it. And I wasn't forgetting about those guys. Uh, Our men are running for then I lose my calf, which is inevitable, because he's bringing in Polish Legion. And they're, they're pretty good. So these guys are totally engaged. They sort of made a square they worked. And then this cab, that bastard cab, you know, he got, he went all the way around, you know, and that was a good play. You know, he, it was good for him to not engage uh, this area. So right now, I have both of my cab routing, but I line up, and I just start hammering at those guys, and they get some morale back because, you know, they're with their own men, and I didn't want to shoot my own men, so I kind of form a, men a triangle, and I do lose those guys, which sucks. But I wasn't too concerned about it, because look at that morale boost, you know? Because uh, he got a promotion, that morale boost actually helped me out a lot. And these guys were squared. Uh, I f forgot why. I think it was because uh, I thought his cav would do something. And then over here, this is really clever. He thought he could take out my general, but I had saved one of my cavalry units in the back. Uh, because, just in case, something like this happened. And even though my men aren't the best, his cruisiers, uh, I still uh, managed to hold them off. And that's what they're really there for. And these cav, you know, they circle to charge, but I'm running my general. You know, I'm going pretty quick. Uh, let me see where's that. Oh yeah, so these militia finally break. It was to be expected. They got un they got to 20 men. I mean, that's pretty good. Fighting until you get to 20 men is good. And this cavalry totally blindsides me on my general, and I'm like, God damn it! So I quickly run out again. You know, the general is not there to fight. And as these guys are uh, falling back, um. What's it called? I, I get uh, the opportunity to uh, keep this line uh, fully functional. So I line these men up. I order my general to, like, hey, get the hell out. And my general guy, the guy, the model who's the general, uh, he was still alive, I think. Yeah. So it wasn't uh, horrible, actually. And these guys, like, sprint out of the way. And we're backing up a bit, you know? I'm not going to overstep. We're backing up, because we have a cav to deal with, and we don't like that. Now my ally takes a building, uh, that's what uh, that is. So he charges in, you know, with his bad morale units. Then this happens, he's like, hey, I'm gonna uh, try and flank you. And I keep these guys over here to the side, because I knew there was his ally was doing something kind of funky, which is fine. You know, that's totally acceptable. Uh, so I just turn uh, men these men, running, and then I end up losing uh, the uh, what's it called? the Highland. F no, they're just regular foot. My Highland uh, men are still fighting, but I lose a regular line, which is okay because you know I didn't expect them to be perfect. But because we're Great Britain, our line infantry is epic like that. You know, we're just completely destroying them uh, handily. And then all these dudes show up, and I'm like, well, crap. I guess we better stop him. And so, he moved his lights too close. Uh, he shouldn't have been uh, moving that close to these line infantry. You know, these are th this is a light infantry unit and a uh, regular uh, unit. And I'm not bringing uh, 
skirmishers to this fight because I figured, you know what, that extra five range, that shouldn't be too bad. And so he lets me, he pushes up, but I managed to get a U on him. And a U means I can totally handle this. And his general's back there. Uh, I didn't really think about his general too much while I was playing, but I wasn't, you know, unaware of his cav there. Now my Highland Foot do run, I think. Uh, let me check. Yeah, my Highland Foot break. Uh, probably because he brought up an extra line uh, on this side. But it's okay, because overall I had routed two men over here already, and even though these guys were also uh, gonna break, uh, now I figured if I just keep up the pressure, you know, I backed off, and this is another thing I hate doing is having this kink, because he could have rushed this side and I would have been messed up. But he doesn't. He actually just stays put, and that helps. So he brings his general over to like give morale, and probably rally that troop that really shouldn't be routing yet for him. And these guys get absolutely destroyed, because I bring over two extra units uh, for backup, just in case. And he's not engaging me. You know, if you're going to bring over troops to aid your ally to get the flank, then flank. You know, you're not going to... Oh yeah, and uh, some cav uh, charged, uh, tried to get my general, uh, but my general uh, made it, and we squared. And this guy must not have been paying attention because I was uh, getting out of square and then because he was starting to back off and then he saw I got out of square so he came after me and fortunately I was still managing this I look at my mini map oh I know we why their general, sir. yeah now the general kind of ran in and that was pretty good so I get back in a square and right in time is the cav charge so they're gonna break quick uh, these men all have great angles and they're getting those uh, promotions which give them morale boosts and then these four units who were doing pretty well. I mean, some of these guys are pretty much untouched. These front units are... Wow, that uh, Lightfoot actually never took a casualty. That's good. So my general's still alive with five men, you know? And I think it's great that, uh, you know, this guy with the white, that's the, the guy who was important to hang on to, and he's still alive. So he pushes up here, which is very good. You know, he's getting good shots. Uh, but I come around on the side uh, to try and cut him off. Now over here, there is fighting, uh, my uh, Austrian ally, uh, Jimmy, he's kind of attacking, you know, he, he went the long way around because he was having some issues, so he charges his cav forward, this guy can't square, I think, or just doesn't, and breaks him, which is uh, what he wants to be doing, and because this guy sent some of his army to go attack me and then failed, because like, look at this, he's bringing more guys over. Right, and like all these guys are routing, you know, it's there's not much he can do. So this guy just tries to get out, you know, he's running, because what is he gonna do? Because uh, his men are dead here. Because once this cav gets around, they can't protect two fronts. That's not how it works. One of our <coughs> units has used all its ammunition, sir. Oh, so this is interesting. So I know it's not always recommended to do this, but this unit ran out of ammunition, and they were just yes, foot guards. You know, they were my good units. You know, they were strong. So I figured. You know, we're, for some reason, we're not getting these guys, you know? They were down to 26 men, and it was a real pain. So I just, uh, charge them. Because that'll, because when the unit's in melee, they can't shoot. So that'll give these guys chances to, uh, open fire on them. And they get into the red, uh, but not enough for them to break. So there is time for, um, for this unit to charge, um, them. But they run away. Like, the guy, they, they break you know, from all the gunfire. And we're getting attacked over here, so I immediately move over my lines to defend, and I'm gonna fill in this gap to get the angle on him. And I see this wounded unit coming back, which is okay. So his cav charge through, and totally get around all of his men. He took the long way, but, you know, we had to be careful. And the Polish guy, you know, he, or sorry, Austrian guy, he did his best, but it, it does force this guy to retreat, retreat back across the river to try and fight uh, this unit, and I just uh, decide to wail down on uh, this last unit. I break him instantly. Yep. Now a bit of mismanagement of micro, which I need to improve, is uh, One you know, of our units has used all its ammunition. This up. unit that had run out of ammo was just chasing chasing this unit down, which is fine. Uh, so this unit runs out of ammo, and I kind of was kind of bummed about it because they were kind of in an important choke. So I charge them because they're totally useless uh, if with no ammo. So, 
And they're still fresh, uh, which is quite surprising. You know, they're wavering fresh, you know. And they're pretty low. Uh, I'm pretty sure we get into the charge before they break. But uh, thanks to them hit making a successful charge, I think that boosted their morale. And then these units uh, start pounding down at them. And random shot flew up that way. All right. So I realize all his men are routing, and I'm like, okay, let's uh, redeploy and move to uh, squish uh, the second player. Uh, I guess it didn't lag for the video because uh, we had some baggage when we were playing, um, but it's okay. Our men are running, sir. So we lose the melee units, but you know what? There was only 24 out of 120, and they were out of ammo, so it was okay. And so we get a free volley at these running uh, Frenchmen. And I still have a decent amount of my army left. I mean, they're wounded, sure, but, you know, it's okay. Because we have good angles, you know, okay. Maybe this isn't the best angle. But we can see them, I mean, yeah, even these guys down here, you know, they can do it. So they push up, uh, which is not necessarily necessary, unless they're out of range. But I make a second line uh, to fall back to, just in case, but I'm not concerned about it. Uh, what I was actually checking for is if these guys could see over them which they barely do, uh, these guys up on this hill. They have the angle uh, to fire, which is uh, really key. So I j I'm moving my guys up, and god, look at all these bodies. I mean, don't get me wrong, I lost a lot of men, but the point is that he lost more. Uh, that's how you win a battle. Uh, I'm just gonna get rid of that thing. So I lose a unit um, from that. But I still have a, a, a sizable force, and these guys are, you know, they're steady, you know, they're they're concerned, you know. And these guys break. So all that's left is these guys up here, which uh, my Austrian pal is totally just moving his units up. I don't know what he was complaining about. He said something about, like, how he's ha having trouble getting over the river, but honestly, if he just ran his men, because my men did a lot of running. I mean, I'm pretty sure... Uh, why are they still fresh? They should be tired. Maybe because I walk them. Uh, I do w do some walking for my men to help out. And these guys, uh, they wanted to go to engage me, but they realized they were about to get flanked by the Austrians who were an immediate threat, so he just clumps in the middle. Uh, don't ever do this at all, because you will get uh, horribly uh, destroyed if you do that. So, we, yeah, we just uh, kind of on cleanup now, uh, charging. And I'm not fast-forwarding because... Okay, sure, I'll, I'll show you this. So my Austrian uh, ally, uh, Jimmy, he just keeps fighting. And I was talking to him on TeamSpeak. It's not like he's a random guy or anything. See how he, like, fills out the line right there? You know, that's what you want to be doing. And he, he just gets the U, because the U is the way to win. These guys uh, get some morale back, which is kind of annoying. Uh, which means my men actually have to do something. So we're running. I saw him. I was trying to get on top of this hill, if you hold spacebar. This is what my original plan was, uh, to cut him off, uh, no matter what. And then, uh, he ignores the Austrians. And the Austrians have to go through another choke. So I'm, I'm just running these guys, you know. Like, these, this is two units of, uh, this is my KGL, uh, my best unit, who are completely fret. Well, they have one loss, whatever. Who cares about one single loss? But, uh, uh, hold on, my dog is doing something kind of weird, so I'm going to pause for one second. I'm sorry, that was very unprofessional, uh, but something happened and it could have been an emergency. So, anyway, um, so we move up. Uh, I'm getting into this position, uh, getting ready to attack, and uh, my the French dude sets up one line over here, which I guess, you know, you gotta do it, because the British are kind of swarming. And like I said, the British have the best line infantry in the game, so I'm very confident in uh, what they can do. So we uh, form up a solid line, and that, that area back there was meant for those units that are coming up. But I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna wait for them. And we fire into the hill. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Because uh, they got in range. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. And then, yeah, these guys, they ran out. And they were light foot. They were light infantry. And I'm like, you know what? Even though they're light foot, 
and they're not really meant to be in melee, they ran out of ammo, so obviously, like, I gotta make sure to get use out of my men. And I realized, you know, I actually zoomed in uh, and saw that I was going up against a hill. And I'm just Infantry gonna get rid of that map position. for the final for the final battle. Is soon to be yours. Pretty awesome. He gets a good volley on me, uh, which sucks. But these men, my light infantry charge, they break because they're light infantry. But that was okay because that was enough time for me to get into position to have uh, these men start cutting over. Yes, sir. So these guys are really damn good. Uh, they're the KGL, so they just wreck everyone. And we charge, and I know uh, we're fighting the Swiss foot, so it can be a bit confusing uh, to watch. Uh, but here's some here's some blue guys over here, and the Austrians uh, came to deal with that. So I'm just gonna have my KGL uh, destroy them because the KGL are awesome, and these guys w are even lining up on the side to fire, and we were aware a line might be aiming at us from that angle. So we break them just in time to get these guys to fire a different unit. And I decided to charge down the hill. Because these guys just kicked ass in melee and only lost, like, 16 men. And that's pretty good uh, for infantry melee. And this is the only unit left, and my Austrians clean them up with some help of my supporting gunfire. And that's the battle. So, uh, I'm Mel Murphy. Uh, hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, and by the way, thank you to Sharp and Desgjbrab uh, for playing uh, with us. It was very fun, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll play again. Oh, and I just want to point out, I got, like, double the kills of anyone else. Just saying. Because I had to fight two armies. That's what happens. So, anyway, uh, see you guys next time.